with that, um, James, who's going to speak? I have been chosen as tribute. Okay. Um, I think one of the best things about my father would be his vision, his lifelong vision. That's something my mom knows about anything else. He was a simple, he was a very simple man. He always had one thing he wanted to do, and that was to help people and to take care of his family. And that, that's his vision. And what I think is interesting right now is I'm standing here and I'm looking at everyone here, and all of you are part of his vision. Because my dad would want to reach out to every single one of you and touch each one of you in a different way. And so to me, one of the most special things about my dad is he may be simple, and he may not like you know a whole lot of things, like he doesn't like board games, I can tell you that. <laughs> but you know, he likes helping people, and he likes teaching people, and he likes doing both of those here because he can teach everyone here how to protect themselves, which in advance helps other people from here. So it's kind of a web. So his vision is touching everyone else. I think that's one of the most special things about him. So I share that. children pretty much like and when he's not with us he's always thinking about you guys when he's here with you guys you guys are his children you're his students and he loves you guys and he's very passionate about what he does and I think that's what makes Master Han an awesome dad and an awesome teacher with this whole thing he would do anything to do it and do anything to come back to you guys he loves you guys such a family pretty much master honda i'm his oldest uh uh, one of his oldest friends and, uh, and and his oldest martial arts friend. And I'm going to go back to a time when probably your parents weren't born, and which is kind of scary. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's 1976, and there's two really skinny um, martial artists training in a Korean art under a very strict Korean master. And uh, they meet, uh, I had about six months on Gene Han, on, on Master Han, so I would always be, from that point on, his teacher. And really, when you think about six months in our lives, you know, it's not very significant. But in martial arts, if, even if it's six days, you get to be his teacher. But we were best friends, so it really didn't matter. We trained and trained and trained together, like some of you trained. Exactly like with Mr. Collins and Mr. Cody, they pushed two individuals that are roughly the same age, you guys have the same goals, and you guys trained together. And you know, that was us um, 35 years ago. And uh, it was a wonderful time. And we really kind of, we hewed our, our Taekwondo chain of ability in the fire of each other's spirits, always playing off each other's energy to become better and better. I would not be the martial arts I, I, today if I had a different partner, because uh, Master Han, soft-spoken, very, you know, very uh, a gentleman, was a very uh, worthy fighting opponent, one of the best fighters I've ever trained with. And that's what we did. We fought, we fought in tournaments, about 70, 70 tournaments together. Um, and, uh, and win or lose, we were always kind of, you know, uh, learning from each other. And so he was one of, I, I, it's kind of hard to explain to some folks, but he was one of, the, one of the best teachers I ever had before either of us were ever teachers. And now seeing Gene uh, some 35 years later, and uh, he's not doing, doing it well, and, uh, and being beat by his side so much, as the family uh, will tell you, he's still teaching me. And things like courage, spirit, faith, family, uh, uh, confidence, um, the ability to, 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 no matter what your state of mind is or state of being, to still be a teacher. Uh, you know, we can't go into it now, but he's brought so much of the world together uh, without moving a finger. And so it just shows you what a strong spiritual connection he has to his students and to probably the universe. Um, he's, again, it's, it, it's, there's a lot going on with him, and I would like to say the most important thing to the family uh, is keep him in your prayers. And, uh, that's and he definitely keep him in your thoughts. Those two things, I guarantee he can feel. And I and I personally, the family will also convey what a wonderful group we had tonight and, and your spirit. 
uh, to him. I will tell you a story because um, James won't forgive me if I don't, and I think it's his favorite story, but um, to give you an idea how close we are and the kind of relationship we had when we were your age, right? These people over here, um, them people. Um, we, we were trained together, and we used to like to break boards. And you know, boards are significant of a barrier, right? I mean, it's not really breaking the wood. Most people can do that with a saw. But it's a personal barrel when you kick it with your foot, or you break it with your hand or your head. And we did all those things. And then whenever there was a board or two lying around the studio, we'd pick it up and break it. And Master Chung, our first teacher, got really upset with that because he never had any boards when the students wanted to break because Gene, Gene and I used to break them all, right? So one day there was two lying around. I went to Master Han and I said, um, and forgive me if I call him Gene because he is my best friend. Uh, I, uh, Master Han, I held two boards up and I said, do you want to try to break these? And he says, well, I can break two boards easy. I said, how about with the step sidekick? You know what that is? He said, sure, I'll do that. So he said, okay, get a little bit farther back and, and let's do that and, and turn around and fix your uniform. So he turns around his uniform and I took the two boards and I turn them a quarter turn over. Now, if you know anything about breaking boards, if the grains aren't lined up, they're very hard to break. If you go this way, they're next to impossible. It's like, try kicking a piece of plywood sometime, right? And, and if they're an inch thick. So, you know, he didn't see me do it. He gets back, he gets all psyched up, and he goes, throws this beautiful super kick right on the money, and the boards just go boom. And of course, I'm trying to keep a straight face. I said, you just need to go a little bit harder. And he hit it a little bit harder the next time. I said, you know, Gene, if you're right there at the edge of it, you got to go a little bit, a little bit harder. So Master Han wails it as hard as he could. And on about the fourth time, I said, you know what, turn around and fix your uniform. It's not straight. And I switched the boards back, right? So on about the fifth or sixth time, I can't quite remember, he does this really strong kick straight into the board. And of course, they shattered. almost killed me, right? Because he was putting all the energy possibly out of there. So I kept my mouth shut. And we go over to Carl's Jr. We had our, our terrible chicken sandwiches like we ate every single day of our lives back then. That's all we could afford, right? And, uh, and, then, and we basically, uh, he, he asked me, he says, well, you know, what, were the boards wet? Because wet boards don't break, right? And then were they, were they spruce or some other wood? And I said, no. And he said, you know, I just can't understand why they didn't break. You know, they must have been really hard wood. And I said, well, they didn't break, Gene, simply because I turned the boards around. And he get, his jaw drops. He says, well, why would you do that? And I said, well, we had this theory, remember, that boards wouldn't break if you, if you uh, change the grain. So I thought I would try and see if that theory was correct. <laughs> so Master Hans looks at me kind of blankly, and he says, well, you know, what's the deal with that? I mean, why, why did you use me as a guinea pig? And I said, well, like I said, I was testing a theory. He says, well, you're testing your theory, then why in the world did you stop and not keep going? And I said, because my hands were getting tired, right? <laughs> and so I just looked at him. I knew I was going to get it back at some point in time. And I won't tell you the whole story, but we, one of the greatest fighters that was alive back then, and he's not no longer alive, was Leroy Charbonnet, and he was a great fighter. And I never knew who he was. We we're kind of new in the fighting scene. We we're in the black belt division, and we both fought heavyweight. And Gene went out in the, in the schoolyard and was watching a guy practice. This guy was throwing roundhouse kicks, you know, the kick with the, uh, the instep of your foot. And he was hitting a basketball pole so hard with his pads on that the basketball thing was shaking like this. And so Gene gets this idea. He told me later, well, that's, you know, that guy's obviously pretty good. I don't want to get hit by that kick, right? And so in those days, I don't know if you do it these days in tournaments, but you line up next to, in a, in a group of a line, usually by height, and you can sometimes, you know, move a little bit over and pick the fighter that you want to fight. And we always wanted to fight someone easy, especially when we started out, so we'd have we an easy win, we'd go on the next, next uh, tier, like you guys do. So uh, uh, he says, John, this guy's, I saw him out in the schoolyard. I mean, he looks big, he looks good, but he's really clumsy and slow. You know, I go, okay, well then, you know, uh, thanks, Gene. Kaboom. So I line up next to him, and uh, the guy almost killed me. All right? <laughs> I lost decisively for two reasons. One, I trusted Gene. I forgot about the concept of revenge, which we had already you know, which was very prevalent in our lives back then. We came to each other. And then, you know, I underestimated my opponent, right? And so. I taught Gene a lesson, you know, which we call in, in the military, pack your own shoe, right? Check your boards to make sure they're correct. The lesson I'm teaching you all today, don't trust your best friend. Especially if he looks like me. The second thing is, you know, to, to, uh, you know, to uh, never underestimate your opponent. And that's kind of things that came out of that. That's the kind of relationship we had. And, you know, we were actually, we laughed, we laughed about it right after it happened. We laughed about it ever since. Um, so 36 or 37 years later, here we are today. And, uh, you know, we've never lost contact. We've raised our kids together. My son Ian is the same age as, as um, James. And, uh, you know, to say something about the Han family, it's a black belt family. And it's a martial arts family. And we have the consummate, um, I like to say, uh, it, well, it's, it's the wind in our sails when we have someone behind us that really says, look, 
Um, aren't you supposed to be at practice? You know, it's, 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 it's 15 minutes, and what are you doing sitting here having a nice warm you know, dinner with me? Get out there and teach those kids. And this is exactly what Darlene Hound uh, has been since uh, the inception of the youth program with, with all our students here. And then good people like uh, uh, Sensei Collins and Sensei Cody that have come out of that program, you know, are a direct result of Darlene pushing, you know, uh, a father that, you know, had to make a choice. I love my family. I want to be there 100% for him. But he, Darlene recognized the fact that martial arts were inseparable from what Gene was. And where some of us in life, really, we, know, we all know people that would try to take that away and change a person, Darlene saw the, the virtue in building that up in his character and use, using the, uh, that energy to help society. It does not get any better than that. So this is a, this is a Taekwondo Chang Kwan mom, but she's the ultimate mom uh, without the Chang Kwan. This is in her roundhouse. <laughs> but um, she's she's like my sister, and and as, and as I've always told her, you know, we are Chang Kwan family. Uh, we take care of our own, and she's she's really lucky and blessed. Um, genius, and, and we all are to have um, such a wonderful person in our lives. So for Mrs. Hong. Mr. Master Gene Hong. So, and then, so she, when, when he got his master, I was lucky enough to give it to him uh, several years ago. I was kind of tying it around both, both of them. And I'm giving Gene a certificate in front of a couple of hundred people, and I'm holding it up like this. And, and you know your instructor, Master Hong, he's over here, and I got the certificate here, and Gene's going like this. So we stopped the whole ceremony and reprimanded Gene for peeking. You know, he's trying to peek on the certificate. But only he knew, and I knew kind of the comedy. Well, we all, everybody did by that time the comedy behind that situation. These two wonderful young people here, um, you know, that, that I thought I knew before, I had no idea their inner strength, their resolve, and their commitment to their family. Uh, James and I have spent some time together, and this guy rocks. I mean, he's got all the confidence of a 75-year-old uh, wise man in a 19-year-old in a body. He's a great poet, incredibly intelligent. He likes to play video games like me, and he's really a, a rock solid guy. It's supposed to be a secret. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's out today. Uh, so James, James is a phenomenal young man. Uh, Kirsten um, officially adopted me as her uncle yep. uh, on, on the last Tuesday, and I accepted uh, gratefully. And uh, which is, I, I don't have any nieces that I know of, so that I got this one now. And uh, and it's, she's a great, um, she's a great niece to have. She's been so strong. She's definitely daddy's little girl. She's mommy's little girl. And she's got, uh, she's got a great sidekick, and she's a great martial artist. So, you know, she's got that balance, like, uh, how would I say, beauty with the sidekick? You know, yeah. uh, <laughs> switch made with lipsticks, as we used to call it in my day. So um, I'm, I'm confident that, you know, she's going to go on with both these young people are going to go on with their martial arts career. That's a burden on, on Cody and Mr. Collins we'll talk about later. But the, uh, they're, they're uh, I mean, that in a good way, right? And then, and then um, but, but they're tremendous young people. So for the, my heart goes out to both of these people. I want, to, I want you to know that Christmas is a season of giving, and it's also a given a season for young people. It's a, give, it's a season of thanks. We have a lot to be thankful for. I want to invent my own ho holiday so called like Thanks Christmas or you know Turkey Giving or whatever we can do to make Santa be half Turkey, half, half Santa Claus. Whatever we can do to combine those two holidays and realize that sometimes th this is a season where we, we tend to get more than we give. But remember that, in especially with things going on in the Han family and with all of us, let's remember that it's also a, a time for prayer and a time for uh, giving, uh, uh, giving our thoughts and our prayers in a mm -hmm. direction. And in this, this season, I'd like a lot of it to go towards uh, Master Han. Keep them in your prayers. Um, uh, I want to say a little bit about these two guys, that, which deserve a whole lot. Uh, he's been uh, Master uh, Mr. Collins. A uh, slip there, Troy. Um, he was. He has really taken the helm in every aspect of what we're doing. Uh, uh, we're on the phone a lot. Um, you know, I want to ask his permission to come down here. I mean, I know how important this is to him, but you know what? He, he's he's great on his own. Um, he uh, have no every confidence. I've seen him interact today. I know how they interact with the teams. I know how he's always you know uh, communicating with the youth. I mean, his life is built around his son, his family, his wonderful wife, Susanna, 
and also you guys. I mean, he talks about you. I'm on the phone. It's all he talks about. It's all he, you know. And when, when you talk about something, you know, us guys who talk about martial arts, other people are talking about their golf games, about the tennis games, about their, you know, their Yahtzee score. I don't know what, but he's talking about his kids on his fighting team. You are part of him. You are part of Master Colin, Mr. Collins. Okay. And his son and his uh, and his senior in martial arts, ironically so, is Cody. Who, you know, I've I've seen blossom and, and grow in in the in the uh, last several years. I'm going to be a, a you know a, a very confident young people, a person like the fighters here today, into what he is today, a fantastic fighter, a great son, a true leader, um, you know, leadership qualities that we can all inspire for aspire towards. So Cody my, and, and Mr. Collins, my hat, my hat goes off in the association to both of you. much, but you know, you are what makes it all happen here, and I don't know everybody in the room, but I feel the energy, and that's what life's all about, carrying that energy forward. What Gina's taught me and teaches me every day now is we have to play it forward, and Gina's in a hospital room right now, and it's kind of an amazing place. Uh, I haven't told the Hans, but last night a nurse comes in, the whole entire hospital knows Gene Han. They know the spirit in the room. He has people at off duty coming over and visiting him. You know, we, we want to see this guy Gene, you know. And you know he's holding court in there, like like like. Uh, I mean, there's no celebrity that could have any or any person that's ever been in that hospital. Well, they said that there, that is the most significant hospital room that they've ever seen in that hospital. Um, if you think about that, that's awesome. They t t talk about this family that's there all the time. This crazy guy that's in there all night sometimes and talking to him and holding his hand. I changed his bed today. I mean, it's, it's amazing, and it's an honor to do that. And then Darlene comes in, and there's hugs, and there's kisses, and then and the nurses all know Darlene, and they, they know Kirsten, and they know James, you know, and they know your pictures are on the wall. Your pictures are going to be on the wall after today. That's your job, right? But the, the, uh, that's no responsibility. But they're going to be on the wall. We have 50 or 100 pictures on the wall now. It looks like a, 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 a living shrine. A shrine. No uh, yeah, it's a shrine. That's on yeah. his own Hall of Fame in there. Yeah, we have a shrine going there. And that's all your energy that we're bringing into that room, okay? It's a wonderful, solid energy um, that we're all sharing. So, um, again, I'm too long-winded. I want to thank everybody for your, your, your patience now. With any kind of change, there's a little bit of chaos, okay? So it's controlled chaos, and if things seem like they're going back and forth just a teeny bit, these two guys are going to tweak it up and get it going again, okay? I promise you that. These two guys can handle it, all right? So, uh, yeah, Cody would like to do something. Okay, uh, the, oh, sorry, one second. Yeah, we have a website, and James? Yeah, we have uh, a site, and then we have a page. Uh, for those of you who may be on Facebook or uh, or just cruise the internet, there's a page on Facebook. Uh, it's called Gene Hans Care Page. You can check that out if you're on Facebook. And if you just want to cruise online, you can go to caringbridge.org. Caring Bridge. Nobody seems to get through. So I'd say it again. You go on there and you type in Gene Hahn, and you'll get his page. And I'll be updating that every few days, and I'll update it tonight. So if you're interested, you can go on there. It takes like three minutes. You have to sign in. This is a privacy policy on there. So just go ahead and do that. And we'll keep that updated. Cody, would you like to change type of things? Well, I'm Cody. I'm sure everyone here knows that by now. Um, a lot of you guys have been a master on for a while, and uh, for those who don't know, when he started uh, working at AYLP as an instructor, um, I was his first student and uh, got to be his first uh, black belt brother by himself. And so I've got to know Master Han over the years. Um, there's a lot of stuff that he doesn't that he doesn't do now that he used to do back then. Like he used to make you cry in the middle of the class for one. You guys probably know that. Um, he was. He used to spar back then. You guys never really got the, a chance to see him in action. Uh, Master Han, I'm pretty sure from my grandmaster told you can get an idea. He was and still is a great, one of the greatest fighters alive. He, uh, he was a good mentor all around. Still is. You know, he, like I said, he's in the hospital bed right now, but he's still teaching to this point. Um, everyone that goes in there gets to see him. He's, um, he's still showing us. His, uh, his leadership and Master Han, if, if you guys don't already know, he's one of the 
nicest guys alive on this planet. Um, if you were need a ride anywhere, he would, if he couldn't, if he couldn't do it personally, if he couldn't arrange every one of his uh, plans that day around to give you a ride somewhere, he would find someone that could, or or any kind of problem you had, he would do whatever he could in his power to make it happen. Uh, I I don't know any other person that would that is that dedicated to helping people like uh, Kirsten was saying. He's uh, he's that man that would do anything to help anybody. He just wants to. Makes everyone's life easier, and, and even you can ask my dad. Uh, he went in there to go visit him. He, uh, you know, he's in the hospital, and he still managed to find time to laugh. You know, this is a very it's it's not easy to talk about it. Um, this is a, these are my, my family right here, so it's not easy to talk about. But, as you guys know, me and Cody are really close to Master Hong. All of you guys are really close to Master Hong. Okay? Um, when I walked in his room, you know how I am. I made a big production. I walked in the room, there's nurses in there. And I said, hey, everybody in here know that this is the greatest martial artist on earth. This is Master Gene Hong. And he raised his head up off the bed and he looked at me and he says, you got that right. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the coolest thing I heard all day. He laughed at jokes. Um, we held hands most of the day. Um, and, and we went through a lot of little things together. Me and him have been through a ton of stuff together. He helped me raise my uh, son. He's a really good guy. Uh, I'm going to have a, we're having a benefit dinner for him Saturday. If uh, the best thing you guys could do is everybody show up, okay? We're doing the best we can with what we have, okay? You guys are stuck with me for a while. Um, I'll make it right. I made some mistakes on this testing and all that, but uh, as you can probably tell, uh, it's pretty hard for me, okay? But Gene Han will still carry you. Right? No matter what we do, he'll be there with us. No matter how this turns out, Master Han will always carry this room. Each one of you guys that are already training, including the parents, uh, we are carrying on his legacy from from this point, like you said, to whatever happens. You we always, are Master Han. We're, you always found a Gene Han, okay? Um, I'm after a benefit deal this Saturday. There's some tickets that we have here. We're taking donations for the family. All it is is a hot dog hamburger event. We're going to watch the movies at the Cayman's house. They couldn't be here tonight. They're in the play right now. Uh, but it's really important for you guys to show up if you can. Okay? And anything you can do to help them out. Um, if you see uh, Mrs. Jenkins here, um, she's kind of handling the food part of it for me. Um, so if there's anything that you guys can do to help out, that would be great. Um, I think that... Uh, she has, the, they're passing around this uh, poster board right now, that uh, on Saturday, uh, I'll be taking that to Master Han. And me and the Grandmaster will read everything that you guys wrote on that board will be spoken to Master Han that day. Mr. Collins, have you seen how many things are on that board? We're going to be reading for a while, sir. <laughs> so, you know, that part you didn't tell me, okay? But, but okay, all right. we're together, so together. I'll work the day on that one, so. I, I, this is my only chance to get to tell this guy something, right? I'm listening he, too, I'll tell he, you uh, what. He's helped me a ton, okay? He calls me every day to help me get through all this, okay? Take a deep breath. We're not going to let you do, you got to say what you got to say. You guys can imagine um, how hard it is. This is the man.